Eternally Yours, a program of inspiring music and an eternal message of hope. On today's program, Bob Marinuk continues his testimony. Our musical guests are the royal heirs. And Reverend Mabey's sermon is titled, The Secret of Paul's Strength, Part 2. Now let's join Reverend Mabley and her guest, Bob Marinuk. Once again, welcome to Eternally Yours Telecast Testimony Time. Last uh, testimony time, we heard about how Reverend uh, Bob Mary Nook came to Christ, but now we're going to hear about the ministry call. And tell me a little bit more, please, dear Bob, about uh, your family. Okay. Yeah, so we uh, were married May of 1983, and then um, uh, after five years of marriage, the honeymoon just kept going and going. <laughs> We uh, had our first child, Josiah, in uh, April 2nd, 88, so he's 24 now, just newly married, June 23rd. Mm -hmm. And our daughter, Evangeline, was born in uh, February of 1990, so she's 22 and uh, not yet married. And we're encouraging her to wait on the Lord. Mm -hmm. Adam got his wife in a place of rest while he was resting. The mm -hmm. Lord took out mm -hmm. a rib. So mm -hmm. that's, that's I, actually in my life, I was in that place of resting when I met Alice, and so you weren't uh, even really looking. God no, just sort of opened your eyes to her. That's, that's exactly awesome. what happened. And as a youth pastor, and at this get together with a friend, and we met, and uh, it was five times together, then engaged, then married a short time later, and no looking back. No looking back and youth pastor and uh, 29 years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're coming up to our 30th in May. Mm. So Mar Alice uh, married into a youth pastorate position as I was a youth pastor at the time. Mm -hmm. And uh, for four years we were youth pastoring and uh, then became assistant pastor. But before that, we were involved at the Pavilion of Promise at Expo 86. So the World's mm -hmm. Fair in Vancouver. Mm -hmm. And for five and a half months we led... Um, people to the Lord from all over the world. It was one of the highlights of our Christian walk. That was 1986, the summer of It 86. was absolutely awesome. Oh, they had some kind of pavilion. So amazing. Yeah, it was called the Pavilion of Promise. Mm -hmm. And uh, 100 Huntley Street uh, mainly sponsored that, but many Christians got involved as chaplains and workers. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so Alice and I were involved there. Mm -hmm. And uh, then after that, we've done various ministry trips, uh, short-term missions trips, um, one to Argentina. I remember I'd uh, gone down there and one of the highlights there, we talk about ministry, was ministering a lot in different churches. and had some time off and it was one day um, I wanted to get her a gift and I thought well maybe a gold chain necklace would be nice so I priced them out didn't really have the money for it but we were fishing at this river this one day and uh, I had my hook dangling in the water waiting for the fella to bring the bait and he came along and so I pulled my hook in it was a, a river if anybody's aware of the Fraser River quite a bit larger so I pulled my hook in and here on the end of the hook wrapped around the hook was a 14 karat gold chain necklace my goodness <laughs> right that's amazing Isn't that something? it reminds me of the story of then uh, when they wanted them to pay taxes jesus sent the disciple yeah, that's right to, it was uh, peter whatever to go had. fishing got the gold coin and you, the the gold coin, and you got a gold necklace for yeah, your well, dear we paid lady. our taxes so we were okay there but <laughs> my wife needed that's a gift a, what an so. amazing story <laughs> so go the fishing. god who made the universe <laughs> you need something for your oh, lady please. go fishing men <laughs> yeah so i had to make sure that before I took that off the hook that I had a couple witnesses. So I called a couple of the guys mm -hmm, over and mm -hmm. said, look what's on my hook. So this was a gift to my wife. And Praise God. So I've been to Poland. We've seen ministry there with full gospel businessmen, uh, shared my testimony in various cities and places, and mm -hmm. into the Philippines as well, South Korea. And Alice and I have been to South Korea and um, done ministry there. And... Uh, yeah, and we have a ministry we started back in 2006 called Above and Beyond Ministries. Mm -hmm. And um, my primary calling is that of an evangelist. And so I train on evangelism. I have actually mm -hmm. an eight-foot cross as well that I carry and uh, witness in various countries, cities, towns, provinces. Uh, is that your own idea or is it something your parents did? The Lord really birthed it in me. Really? Yeah, to, to carry a cross, cross as a reminder yeah, mm -hmm. to people of the true mm -hmm. message of 
why Jesus came and what was the purpose of his life. Mm-hmm. And so he's anointed me for that. And that's the main thing is not everybody's called very few to carry a cross. And that's only one part of the ministry that I'm called to. But mm-hmm. I've really seen God anoint me for that. And uh, I've seen many people turn to the Lord through that. And I carried it from Kelowna to Winnipeg in June of 07. And uh, back How did again. you do it? Did you walk? I didn't walk the no, whole no, distance, no. but we did have a, an RV with signage all over it, uh, carrying the message of the cross to mm-hmm. the nations of the world mm-hmm. and a big picture of me. And, and again, not that it's about me. We know it's all the mm-hmm. Lord, but mm-hmm. it was just a great opportunity to take the message of what mm-hmm. Jesus Christ brought to the world. You know, he went about doing good and healing all mm-hmm. who were sick and mm-hmm. oppressed of the mm-hmm. devil because God was with them. And so we went and... We're on TV and in different newspapers, mm-hmm. and we didn't go seeking media attention, but, you know, God opened doors, and um, so that was a, a tremendous time. And, and we do marriage seminars as well. Mm-hmm. That's a big part of our, our journey, because in 1993, Alice was hit by a car when she was riding her bicycle. Mm-hmm. And so our marriage, as much as it was really ordained of God, we, we knew that, mm-hmm. as I mentioned, you know, how we were brought together. Uh, 93 she was hit by a car and and um, had some brain injury and Mm. and we went for counseling and they say about 80 percent of all marriages where there's a brain injury of one of the partners it ends in divorce Mm. and um, it was really a tough season because she tended to be too quiet and she would just internalize things if we had any differences hold it all in yeah she would and then after the accident she was like in my face about everything you know, wow. very raw, and so My it was goodness. like marrying a different person. Mm-hmm. And so um, we were eventually separated. She felt that she needed to be on her own, and so for three months we were apart. Mm-hmm. And but we had a lot of people praying for us, and and it took the two of us being willing to work it out. Uh, it's now the marriage is better than it's ever been. But there was mm-hmm. the first seven days after she'd left me. It's like I cried every day. It's like. Mm-hmm. You know, I really had to struggle to see worth in my life, you know, mm-hmm. after the marriage mm-hmm. looked like it was going to fall apart. Mm-hmm. And um, but God was was there working and uh, it was a wake up call for me because I was too controlling. Um, you know, my dad, God bless his heart. I mean, his, he, he did what he knew to do, but mm-hmm. he tended to be very controlling. And mm-hmm. so I started to be that mm-hmm. way as well. Or I was in the marriage and and I didn't honor her enough. And but after this marriage. Uh, after this marriage, after the accident, I was much more honoring and respecting. And uh, we pulled it out of the nosedive. And now God is using us to bring healing to marriages all over the world, you know, as we travel and share our story and, and speak We're going to hear more marriages. about that uh, from Alice, awesome. your precious anointed wife, uh, on another telecast. Great. But, you know, I must say to you, Bob, that it is humbling to admit the things you just admitted. And the Lord mm. resists the proud and lifts up the humble. Yeah. And Father, I just bow my heart and I Thank pray you, for this precious, mighty man mm. of God who's gifted and moral and loving. He humbles himself in your sight and he honors his wife that his prayers are not hindered. I see that so clearly in your word, Father. The husbands are to honor the wives so that their prayers are not hindered. And the wives are to respect and honor their husbands as well. And so I bless this man of God, his marriage, his daughter, his son, and all you've called them to do and be. And I pray, Lord, that as a man of God hear, uh, hear this message, Lord, this testimony, that they too will realize that uh, they need to give their wives space and not be controlling. And I just thank you, Lord Jesus, that uh, you are heal- a healer of lives and marriages. Thank you, Father, for this precious man of God. Blessings on him and his wife and their glorious future in the Lordship of Christ. In Jesus' holy name, amen. 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 What a joy amen. to know you, meet you, and uh, hear thank your you. testimony. Thank you, Bob, for being on Eternally Yours Telecast. Thank you for having me. It's been a My blessing. My pleasure. God bless.
you, Royal Heirs, for the anointed music. Oh, how we love God's music through God's children. Amen. Now sharing from my heart in Christ to your dear hearts, a message I've entitled, The Secret of Paul's Strength. And this is number two. If you miss number one, you can order number two. In fact, there'll be a series of at least three messages, and you can order all three for the price of one DVD because you really shouldn't miss the messages. I have diligently searched the scriptures and found out some keys. How was God so strong moving through Paul? If I was to say in a nutshell, what was the secret of Paul's strength? I'll tell you the truth. Number one, it was God. <laughs> God first, God second, God third, God. But some things happened to bring it about for God to give him such strength. And those are the messages that I'm sharing about Paul's strength. I mean, here this man was laying down, stoned by people that didn't want to hear about the Lord, left for dead, and they walked away. Along come some of God's children, prayed for him, he got up, kind of like almost risen from the dead because he was left for dead. And then the next day he was bringing revival in another city, and he probably walked to that city. <laughs> But I tell you the truth, he was so strong. He suffered so much. Five times he received 39 stripes because 40 would kill you. Not all at the same time, of course. But he survived, and he was a survivor. He didn't give up. He didn't give up. And never give up. Never give up on God. God is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all we could ask and think. And a recent revelation has come to me to do with Hebrews 7 verse 25, which says, praise the living God. God is able to save them to the uttermost who come to him through Jesus Christ, whoever lives to pray for us, his children, his people, his disciples. If you know Jesus Christ as Lord, he's praying for you right now. He's praying for me as I do this telecast. What a wonderful savior. Now, if he died on the cross for our sins and rose from the dead, and if you ask him in your heart to be your Lord, the Holy Spirit will come inside you and speak with your mouth, Jesus Christ is my Lord, to be born of God and live forever and ever in a glorified body with our Lord, where I'm going, hallelujah. You would think that's enough, but he ever lives to pray for us, and he's in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. What a wonderful, wonderful, loving God. So getting back to the keys of what was Paul's strength, the first keys I shared a bit in depth in the last telecast, which will be on this series of what was the secret of Paul's strength. You be sure and order it. It will bless your life. And this is one of the first times I've ever said a message in, for people in television land that I haven't already spoken in some measure to my own people. And we usually meet on Sundays in Burnaby, British Columbia. And if you're in the area, do come visit us. I'd, I'd love to meet you personally. Amen. Now back to the first key. It was believe that God loves you. Christianity is a love relationship with our Creator. So that's the, that's the bottom line. I'm sure God gave Paul a revelation of his love for him. And you, if you ask God to reveal his love for you, that's one thing I know he would be happy to do. And then what happens is that if you realize, and I pray you do, that God loves you, the automatic human response is to love back the one that loves you. And that's in 1 John 4, 19. We love him because he first loved us. Amen? And so I share with you, the first key is love. I'll get on to the second key in a moment. First John 4, verse 16. We have known and believed the love that God has for us. God is love. He who abides in love abides in God, and God is in him. You see, the first key, as I mentioned a moment ago, is love. Believe that God loves you. By the way, it's one of the keys for perfect love that cast out fear. If you need to be more free than, with fear, from fear, you phone my office and order the perfect love that cast out fear message because I have some four keys that help for that as well. But now, what is the second key that I found in the Word of God? The secret of St. Paul's strength. The second key is commitment. Commitment. 
Within the last month or so, the Lord has quickened to my mind, and I've been sharing it in our fellowship that meets Sundays. And, you know, it's this. <laughs> if you want God to give you all he has for you, which is tremendous amount, I don't even think, maybe I haven't even scratched the surface of all the good things he could do for me. And his eyes go to and fro over all the earth, looking for vessels whose hearts are pure before him. And I would add, washed in the blood of Jesus. That's how our hearts get pure. And then to, to show himself, show himself, God, show himself strong in our behalf. Don't you want it that way in your life? Do what Paul did. He, was com he not only believed that God loved him, he was committed to this God of love. I have chosen with all my heart to commit my life to God. In fact, I want the great exchange, my life for your life, Lord Jesus. <laughs> life isn't easy on planet Earth. We need Christ the Lord to manifest himself in and through us. So, of course, the greatest key for Paul's strength was God. And it was Christ being manifest in his life. And I'll get on more onto that in a few moments. So, first, believe that God loves you. Second, Commit to him. And I usually say this before I even get out of bed. James 4, 7, and 8. Submit to God. That's our part. Resist that devil, and he will flee. But resisting is our part in the name of the Lord Jesus. Some people think when you become a Christian, you never have to resist that devil. Well, the Bible says to resist him. The Bible says our war is not with flesh and blood, but with spiritual wickedness in high places. But he gave us the word of God to war against the power of darkness with it. He has to obey the word of God. I believe that with all my heart. Jesus taught us that in Matthew 4, Luke 4. Amen. So draw near to God is the third part in James 4, 7, and 8. And he will draw near to you. He will draw near to you. Hallelujah. Oh, I treasure that part of James 4, 7, and 8. Hallelujah. So hear God's word. Read God's word like you are today. Believe God's word. One of the greatest gifts you can do, dear one, for yourself and to honor God is believe his word. Choose to believe his word. You've got a measure of faith. The Bible says so. Choose to believe his word. And some people think, oh, well, it was wrote 2,000 years ago plus. God protected his word when I use his word in prayer, when I use his word in healing. Miracles happen. I've seen it over and over. Even a woman get up out of a wheelchair and walk. God honors his word. Oh, I could share many good things about his word. In fact, if you call my office, they can send you a sheet of about a dozen things I discovered about God's word that is so precious. And we'll be happy to send it to you. God's word endureth forever. And the Lord is alert and active, watching over his word to perform it. The word has self-fulfilling power in it to bring it to pass. And there's some more that we'd love to send to you. That's just a couple. And scripture is where they are. Amen. 1 John 2, 14. You are strong and the wicked one, the wicked one is overcome because the word of God abides in you. Oh, the word of God abides in me. I believe that when I go in a room, the devil and any wickedness, they flee. It's like, oh, don't go near that lady. She's strong, and the word of God dwells in her. I, I feel sometimes like I can't get enough of the word. I love it so. And I believe it, and I encourage you to do likewise. Be in the word. Believe the word. Read the word. Hear the word like you are today. And your faith level will rise. Faith pleases God. Faith pleases God. Amen. So commitment enables a relationship and intimacy with God. God wants intimacy with you. He loves you so much. This love relationship with our creator through Christ the Lord, God wants for you. Knowing God, Daniel eleven thirty two. 32, the people who know their God will be strong and do exploits. Wouldn't you like to be strong and do exploits like St. Paul was? Well, one secret about Paul's strength, I'm sure, was knowing God. How do you get to know God? Draw near to him. Read his word. Hear his word from anointed preachers like you are today. Get to know this God of power and love. Get to know him. And I always add to that, that, that verse in Daniel 11, the people who know God will be strong and do exploits. And I almost always add, to please you, Lord. Beloved one, you were created to please God. I was created to please God. One of the greatest joy you'll ever have in life is when you're pleasing God. Amen. Hosea 6, verse 1 to 3, the Lord says, Come to me. Return to the Lord. Backsliders, come home to Jesus. 
don't stay on that bad road anymore. It's like walking on broken glass. You get wounded and cut, come back to Jesus, come home to Jesus. He says, come, let us return to the Lord, for he has torn and he will heal you. He is stricken, he will bind you up. After two days, he will revive you. And on the third day, he will raise you up and you may live in his sight. Then this is a profound word. Let us know the Lord. Let us pursue the knowledge of the Lord. Then your going forth is established in the morning. He will come unto you, the former rain, the latter rain. Do you know what that means? That means if you and I press on to know the Lord, let's do it together. Amen. Hallelujah. Press on to know the Lord. Then your morning, your days will be prepared as surely as there is a morning. And God will come upon us, the former rain, that's some blessing, and the latter rain, which is a multitude of blessings, strength, to even go through life with the strength that Paul had, which is what this message is all about. Not only is the strength and the blessings that God has for you, dear ones, in the by and by, eternity future, but in the here and now. And you know, if you have received Christ as Lord, eternity is already in your life. Hallelujah. For the soul of you, the spirit of you will live forever and ever in eternity future. Hallelujah. And a glorified body too yet. Philippians 3, verse 20 to 21. Our citizenship is in heaven, for which we also eagerly wait for our Savior the Lord Jesus, who will transform our lowly body, a humble body. We may be conformed to his glorious body according to the working which he is able to subdue all things unto himself. Amen. Galatians 4.19, the apostle says, My little children, I labor in birth again till Christ be formed in you. I'm sure that Paul yielded for Christ to be formed and manifest in and through his life and the secret of Paul's strength with God. It was God. Colossians 1, 20, 29 says, I labor according to God's power that works in me mightily. God's power works in me mightily to even be on this telecast to help you, precious ones. God wants his power to work in you mightily as well. Hallelujah. And he says, not by my spirit, not by my might, but by the Holy Spirit. So we're coming to a close. Commitment entitles intimacy. Believe that God loves you. Intimacy enables knowing God. Knowing God enables loving him. Knowing God enables his rest. It starts with commitment. So you can enter into that rest and experience experience the blessedness of the strength that was in Paul. God wants it for you. Amen. Eternally Yours Television is entirely supported by interested viewers and listeners like you. In appreciation of your gift of $20 or more, we are pleased to offer a gift. Please prayerfully consider your role in supporting Eternally Yours Television. Beloved ones whom God loves so dearly, it is my strong desire in my heart, and I know it's on the Father's heart, that we would have the strength that he put in Paul. Yes, it took commitment. Yes, it took him believing that God loved him. It took him drawing near to God. It took him to keep believing that God was greater, and he is. He made heaven and earth, the stars and the moon, you and me. He knows how many hairs are on our head. He intimately cares about you. He's a God of love. He's a God of love and power and mercy and forgiveness. And he wants to be real and dear in your life. He wants Colossians 1, 27 and 29 fulfilled in our lives. He wills that we would know to our experience of a Christ in us, hope of glory. Because Paul labored according to God's power that worked in him. And if you have Christ in you, hope of glory manifesting himself, you will have the strength that Paul had. And the prayer I want to say today for you and I who have Christ as Lord, and you can have him as Lord before, today you can have him as Lord. And thus wise you can be entitled to have this prayer answered in your life. Hallelujah. It's in Ephesians. And it is chapter 3, where God speaks very clearly what he wants for you and I. And it begins with Christ being manifest and Christ's love being
being in your lives. So, Father, I pray for the viewers. O oh God of glory, according to your riches and glory, that we be strengthened with might by the Holy Spirit in our inner man. Oh, how we need that, Father. That Christ would dwell in our hearts by faith. We be rooted and grounded in the love of God, that we may know the depths, the widths, the, the length, the height of the love of Christ, and be filled with the fullness of God. Lord, as you will that Christ be formed in us, as you will that we would experience Christ in us, hope of glory, as you will that we would go through life in your strength, Father, give them that hope. Give them that hope that truly we can go through life with the strength you put in Paul. He kept saying, Father, as you know, none of these things move me, and nevertheless I will believe God. Have hope, beloved. Have hope. In Jesus Christ's holy name we agree. Amen? Amen. And now I want to say that in coming to a close, that God loves you with an everlasting love. And if you're thinking of doing terrible things like suicide or giving up, don't give up. My prayer for you, my hope for you is that you would live and declare the works of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's an awesome thing, you know, when you give up going through life in your own strength and ask God, grab hold of his rope, and go through life in God's strength. That's what Paul did. That's what Jesus wants for you. So be of good courage and do order the DVD of the life of Paul and his strength. If this telecast has ministered to you, would you please prayerfully consider becoming a financial partner that we may continue to reach out for God's glory? It would be wonderful to hear from you.